Hey guys, what's up? Today we're looking at some more advanced examples of partial derivatives and calculating partial derivatives of functions. So the example here says calculate the first order partial derivatives. If the function, first of all, a is h equals y arctan 3x plus 4z. Second of all, if the function f is equal to e to the x over x plus y squared. And then lastly, c, f of xy is equal to the integral from x to y cosine of e to the t dt. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, differentiate with respect to x first. So h sub x is going to equal y is treated like a constant, so it remains where it is. And now I have to take a composition. I have a derivative of a composition. I have a function 3x plus 4z, which is a multivariable function, plugged into the arctangent function. So what we have to do is we have to say, okay, first take the derivative of the arctangent function. So arctan of 3x plus 4z, take the derivative, but then multiply by the derivative of the inside with respect to x. So 3x plus 4z differentiated with respect to x. So that's a chain rule that we're doing there. We have a multivariable function plugged into a single variable function like arctangent. So first take the derivative of arctangent, then multiply by the derivative of the inside with respect to x. So what's going to happen is this is going to be y times derivative of arctangent is 1 over 1 plus whatever's inside arctan, which in this case is 3x plus 4z quantity squared. So the thing inside arctangent gets a square multiplied now by the derivative of this function, 3x plus 4z, differentiated with respect to x, which is going to be 3. Now, reduce this, we can just write this as 3y over 1 plus the quantity 3x plus 4z squared. Now, it's not necessary to foil that out or anything crazy in the denominator. That doesn't help us. So we're just going to leave it the way it is. Now, differentiating with respect to y is actually a lot easier because we just treat x and z like they're constants. So h sub y is just, this whole arctangent thing is basically like a constant. So it's a constant times y. Differentiate with respect to y, we just get the constant. So the constant in this case is arctan of 3x plus 4z. All right, so that is our derivative with respect to y. And then our derivative with respect to z is going to be very similar to the derivative with respect to x, actually. So the only difference is we're differentiating this part over here with respect to z. So that's the only difference. So h sub z is going to equal y times derivative of arctangent 3x plus 4z times the derivative of 3x plus 4z differentiated with respect to z, which is just going to give us a 4 right there. So this, we know that 4 is going to go where the 3 was earlier, so this is just going to be 4y over 1 plus 3x plus 4y quantity, 4z quantity squared. And that is our first example. So it's actually not too bad there. Um, we just had to do a chain rule on the first and the last uh, partial derivatives. The second one was actually pretty easy because we're just treating the others like a constant. So um, let's look at the second function here. The second function is a little bit... Um, I wouldn't say trickier, it's just a different uh, differentiation technique. So the second um, function that we have to differentiate is e to the x over x plus y squared. All right, so differentiating that function with respect to x is going to require a, a quotient rule. So we have to do the quotient rule and what was the quotient rule? My goodness, it's low d high minus high d low over low low, or low squared. So that's the quotient rule. So low, or the bottom, multiplied by the derivative of the top, high, low d high, minus high d low, so upper function e to the x, times the derivative of the lower function, 
over the lower function squared. So that's the quotient rule. So we're going to have to use the quotient rule to calculate this partial derivative because there's an x in the top and there's an x in the bottom. So f sub x is going to equal derivative of the top, which is e to the x, Mult derivative with respect to x multiplied by x plus y squared minus e to the x times the derivative of x plus y squared differentiated with respect to x over the denominator squared. So that's going to be x plus y squared squared. All right, so now just carry those derivatives out in the numerator. Derivative with respect to x of e to the x is just e to the x multiplied by x plus y squared plus e to the x. Derivative now with respect to x is just 1, so actually just leave it there as a 1, and then over x plus y squared squared. So f sub x is equal to, I can factor out e to the x in the numerator, and that'll leave me with e to the x times x plus y squared plus 1 over x plus y squared quantity squared. And that is the derivative with respect to x of this function. The derivative with respect to y is actually a little bit easier because we don't necessarily have to use the quotient rule here, we just have to use a chain rule. So derivative with respect to y is going to equal Let's see, I have a y in the denominator and an e to the x in the numerator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 1 e to the x out front and then 1 over x plus y squared prime, so differentiating 1 over a function, multiplied by the derivative of x plus y squared with respect to y. So that's a chain rule. I'm going to have to take the derivative of 1 over u, if you will, 1 over u, and then multiply by the derivative of what's being plugged into u here. Here we have x plus y squared being plugged into 1 over u. 1 over u, and u is equal to x plus y squared. So the derivative of 1 over u is going to be negative 1 over u squared, and then derivative of u with respect to x, or derivative of u with respect to y is going to be 2y. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a chain rule. So this is going to be e to the x times derivative of 1 over u is negative 1 over u squared. So I'm going to say that this is negative 1 over this quantity down here squared. And this quantity is x plus y squared. All right, so that takes care of the derivative there. And then differentiate this with respect to y, we get 2y. So if we clean that up, f sub y is going to be negative 2y times e to the x over, parentheses, x plus y squared, quantity squared. And that's our derivative with respect to y of the second function. All right, lastly, the third function, we have an integral, and we want to take the derivative or the partial derivatives of this integral. Well, the fundamental theorem of calculus is going to be needed here before we can take these partial derivatives. So we have to review the fundamental theorem of calculus derivative form. So the derivative form of the fundamental theorem of calculus says that the derivative with respect to the upper limit of the integral, where c is a constant, the derivative of the integral, which goes from a constant to a variable, g of t dt, is just g of x. I literally just take this upper bound, plug it into g, and that's my answer. So the derivative and the integral are kind of like, I hate to say it, but canceling out each other almost. So the, the fundamental theorem of calculus part one, or the, the derivative form, is going to be used to calculate this partial derivative in um, the function. So let's look at uh, part C, and let's take the derivative of capital F with respect to x. If I treat y like a constant, then I have the derivative of the integral which goes from x to y. So actually what we need to do is say take the partial derivative with respect to x of, well, I need that to be, I need that x to be in the upper bound, not the lower bound. So what I can do is I can negate the integral and say it goes from y to x and then cosine of e to the t dt. So really what's happening here is 
now I got a constant y, the y is like a constant, and I can just apply the fundamental theorem of calculus derivative form. So what this is going to do is basically just say the y is going to go away. This is going to turn out to be negative cosine of e to the x. So just take that upper bound x and plug it in. And that's our derivative with respect to x. The derivative with respect to y is actually a little bit easier because we don't have to switch the bounds. We just have to take the derivative with respect to y of the integral from x to y cosine e to the t dt. And that, directly from the fundamental theorem calculus, take this y, plug it in, we just get cosine of e to the y. All right, and those are our two answers for the last integral. The only thing that would change, maybe if you had a harder function in the bounds, is like maybe it were 2y right there. All you'd have to do is multiply by the derivative of 2y, and then you would get your um, answer. But yeah, that's what we do to calculate maybe some more tricky partial derivatives.